What is the greatest NBA 2K title of all time? For most people, that would be NBA 2K11, the first 2K to really solidify visual concepts place on the top of the market. Featuring Michael Jordan for the first time, 2K11 was very hyped, a revolutionary game, and even I made a video calling it the greatest 2K of all time. But what if I told you that NBA 2K12, a game not commonly discussed today, not only paved the road for future 2Ks, but was arguably a better version of NBA 2K11. I still stand behind 2K11 being the greatest in the series due to just how great and important that title was, but 2K12 has been overshadowed by 11 for years, despite arguably being a better game. This game released during the NBA lockout, meaning rookies weren't in the game at launch, and many were unsure if an NBA season would even happen. But instead of simply updating 2K11's rosters and asking for $60, 2K12 tried to give players something fresh. With the uncertainty of NBA's future looming, 2K decided to go back in time and celebrate the storied history of the sport. This was before VC or microtransactions. This was before sports games got complacent. This was when, every year, these games needed to be massive improvements in order to win. And this was when, every year, 2K seemed to rise to the occasion. Of course, compared to the latest 2K, there are some things missing, just as I mentioned in my 2K11 retrospective. But there are also things in this game missing in modern 2K. And when you put yourself in the perspective of an NBA fan in 2011, you can really understand the importance of this release. While it lacked the insane hype 2K11 brought, and likewise the legacy that title left behind, it was an improvement and a better game for its time. 2K12 wasn't perfect, but it was easily one of the greatest NBA 2Ks ever made, and in my opinion, the most underrated NBA 2K of all time. NBA 2K11 was such a great game that most people were still playing it when 2K12 released. For many, within the context of the lockout and the uncertainty of a 2011 to 2012 NBA season, it would have been just fine had 2K not released 2K12, since 2K11 was just that good. But this was from a time when sports games still had to prove themselves. This was from a time when every new sports game felt like a big deal, rather than a soulless roster update. NBA Live was still alive, and while Elite 11 flopped, 2K didn't want to take any chances. How could they improve upon such an iconic and well-received game in 2K11? Had the series peaked? Nowadays, I often see the argument that sports games have peaked, and that there isn't much left for these games to accomplish. I find that to be a lame cop-out. Let's use 2K12 as an example. What do you expect to see in an NBA game? Every team, from their uniforms to their rosters to their stadiums. Every player, with their own specific animations and attributes. A deep career mode and franchise mode and online competitive game modes. That's all you need, right? What else could you do? In 2K12, the developers went outside the box and delivered more. The potential sports games had is so high, but because few sports games ever actually come close to reaching that potential, most consumers have trouble picturing exactly what it is they are missing out on. As I mentioned a few times already, there was an NBA lockout when this game was being developed and first released. How could 2K make this game stand out when they couldn't even include rookies in the game at launch? Well, instead of looking towards the future, 2K decided to celebrate the past, and Visual Concepts took the idea behind the Jordan Challenges game mode in 2K11 and made it into something incredible. Take a look at this. You are seeing the late great Bill Russell playing on a historic court without a three-point line in black and white, with a custom retro scoreboard at the bottom of the screen. Rest in peace, Bill. You will forever be a legend. Here's an example of a 90s game, at the Palace, with the Pistons hosting MJ and the Bulls. Notice the slightly grainy filter over the screen and the older looking scoreboard. 2K12 not only featured a game mode where you could play through the most iconic moments for 15, yes, 15 different NBA legends, but they took it to the next level with matching presentation for each era. Is that not mind blowing to see, considering there's nothing like that in any recent 2K? This is what I mean when I talk about the potential sports games have. With modern technology, you can basically create a time machine, allowing players to experience the full vibe of an era they weren't even alive to experience. And this is just scratching the surface. 
Sports games need to do a better job showcasing the history of their respective sports. And while 2K still has historic teams today, we haven't seen a game mode like this in a long time. And other sports games like Madden don't even have classic teams or rosters anymore at all, instead locking NFL legends behind a paywall on Ultimate Team. NBA 2K12 is legendary for many reasons, but this mode, titled NBA's Greatest, was something truly special. This game wasn't just a cheap way of getting your $60, but instead, it was a legitimate celebration of the sport of basketball. That's just awesome, and nowadays, feels rare. In 2K11, the only real blemishes on what would otherwise be a perfect game were the occasional cheap moments from the AI and the graphics, specifically the players themselves. 2K12 improves in both areas, offering more realistic looking player models and less cheesy defensive AI. This was a challenging game and still had its cheap moments where the AI would make everything in order to force a closer game, or block a shot for example when their head is completely turned. But compared to 2K11, it was an improvement. The player was given a lot more control over gameplay than ever before. Footwork, shot position, release timing, which hand you'd use, and more, were all up to you. Meaning instead of hitting a button and watching the game do some insane dunk animation, you were in full control, leading to a much better and more skill-based multiplayer experience. This was like what NBA Elite 11 was trying to accomplish, but it actually worked out well. 2K11 had amazing gameplay, don't get me wrong, but 2K12 improved it, defying all expectations. After 2K11 took major strides in my player, a mode first introduced in 2K10, 2K12 went even further, solidifying the base for my career today. It jumps right into it, without any elongated story, instead placing you in a game immediately, followed by you selecting your NBA team and nearly instantly starting your career. Back then, your player was actually pretty good out of the gate, since upgrading them with microtransactions wasn't a thing yet. The mode was meant to be fun, not to be a grind. I miss that. Between games you'd get interviewed, and your responses actually had impact. Act like a diva in a press conference, and watch as your home crowd turns on you and chants trade him during your next game. Even outside of the NBA's greatest mode, presentation and immersion were something 2K focused on heavily resulting in greatness across the board. The game's franchise mode, Association, received some small improvements, further planting the seeds for what was then, and still is today, the deepest franchise mode in any sports game with my league and now my NBA. Every game you played in 2K12 felt like a TV broadcast, from the player warm-ups to the team intros to the animated roster lineups, and even in-game fake commercials for upcoming games. The atmosphere of this game was fantastic. If your team was bad, such as the Charlotte Bobcats at the time, few fans would actually show up, resulting in nearly empty arenas. Start winning and watch that change. The commentary was very fresh at the time, and almost sounds as advanced as what we see today. What's crazy is that NBA 2K12 really doesn't feel that different from NBA 2K22. Sure, in terms of gameplay, the games are very different, but everything else feels less immersive or just the same in 22, a game 10 years newer. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather play a fairer, less grindy career mode that isn't trying to bait you into purchasing microtransactions. Paying $60 in 2011 got you the full experience. New to 2K12 was an online version of the association mode. You could, for the first time ever, play an online franchise with your friends. While this may be taken for granted today, it was arguably one of the most important additions in 2K's history. Speaking of atmosphere. Is it just me, or have the soundtracks in modern sports games felt pretty underwhelming? In 2K12, you had that iconic intro with the song Basketball playing. The soundtrack was incredibly varied, featuring all sorts of genres. Not just whatever song or genre is popular at that time. For me, the overall vibe of a sports game can make or break it, and 2K12 had excellent vibes. NBA 2K12 focused on bringing the past back to life taking full advantage of the HD graphics these 7th gen consoles were capable of. Trying to improve upon the greatest NBA video game of all time was a monumental challenge, yet somehow 2K did it. Today, it feels like sports games do the bare minimum to get by. With such little competition on the market, these games are basically guaranteed to be big sellers, and with profit becoming the main focus more and more every year, it's easy to feel like sports games used to be better. 
In 2K12, immersion was a huge focus, and it's something that feels forgotten about today. I don't know about anyone else, but when I play a sports game, I have a better time fully immersing myself in the universe of that sport. I want to feel like I'm running a team or playing through my own career, either as a GM, coach, or player. I want to distract myself from reality for a few hours. Why can't a sports game be a masterpiece or a work of art? Why have our expectations fallen so low? 2K12 almost feels like the beginning of the end for a truly remarkable era. Even today in 2022, playing through the NBA's greatest mode in this older game is a treat. You can spend hours living in the shoes of all-time greats in their greatest moments. With the immersive presentation, incredibly solid gameplay, and innovation shown, 2K12 is that game. With NBA 2K23 around the corner, featuring Michael Jordan on the cover, and with 2K announcing a remastered version of the Jordan Challenges game mode, we can hope that a new era is beginning. One where the primary focus of these games isn't to trick the consumer into spending as much money as possible, but instead to create something truly special and actually worth playing. Personally, I'm skeptical, but I hope these videos I make help reset our expectations as a community and help hold these companies accountable. With the technology we have today and the money these studios bring in, we need to see some more quality in our sports games. We need to see some more innovation in these sports games. The potential is through the roof, yet year after year we've been rewarding mediocrity with our money. What's great about 2K12 is that it didn't focus or even care about the future. You don't need to worry about 2K23 or the current state of the world while playing this game. Instead, you can transport yourself to the 60s and experience what it was like to watch Bill Russell or Wilt Chamberlain in their prime. You got to have your own say in the debate between Magic and Bird. You got to experience the beauty of NBA basketball's past and present. 2K12 was the most underrated 2K of all time, and if not for 2K11's hype, it would be considered the greatest ever. 2K didn't have to go this hard, but they did anyways, because they wanted to create something great. That's a mindset I hope we start seeing again in this genre. Thanks for watching.